This is the Roborock S8 Pro Ultra, which is the new version of the S7 Max-V Ultra, which, as most of you all know, I absolutely loved. However, there was one thing that could be a massive improvement on this model, which we're going to put to the test. I've taken the robot to four different homes to test it, with some large homes, some full of pets, and others just a bit messy, to see how it copes in real homes with busy families. We are giving one of these away, a Roborock S8 Pro Ultra to someone watching this video. Make sure to comment, like and subscribe and watch to the end of the video for more details. We've also put it through our standard tests and specifically compared it with the S7 Max-V Ultra on deep pile carpet with pet hair and on heavy mopping to see how much the upgrades have improved things, which I'll show you soon. The biggest news on the S8 Pro is the dual roller rubber brushes, something that iRobot patented years ago and have been fiercely protecting ever since. Dual roller brushes excel on pet hair on carpet, which was one of the weaker points for the S7 Max. It'll be very interesting to see what happens in the coming months as the situation becomes clearer, because I suspect iRobot won't be very happy at all to see a similar system on the S8. The mopping system has also had a significant upgrade, and it still has the Vibrarize system which lifts the mop up when the robot detects carpet. In my opinion, this is the most essential feature on a hybrid vacuum and mop robot if you have a mixture of flooring. There doesn't appear to be any change to the lifting, which is only 5mm, but I haven't heard many complaints about this being a problem unless you have extremely deep carpet. It's also the first robot with over 6,000 pascals of suction that I've reviewed, but counterintuitively, I don't think this makes that much difference as there are diminishing returns in most situations once you get past about 4,000 pascals. The navigation is still exceptional, although not very different from the previous generation. The quick mapping is amazing and gets your house all mapped out without any effort at all. Robot vacuums struggle with curtains that drape on the floor, but it just barely touched these. It also identified the mat on the very first clean and vacuumed that specifically, going around its perimeter first. This reduces the risk of the mop touching the carpet while it's still lifting itself up and also probably decreases the stress on the mechanism. One other small but important change, they've finally covered the Ultra Dock containers and it looks so much better. When the robot returns to the dock, it empties the dirt into a two and a half litre container, which does require a disposable dust bag. It also has a three litre water container so that it can wash its own mop and refill the onboard water container. This is amazing because not only does it make it almost totally hands free, but it allows the robot to return to base and wash itself mid clean. They've also built a self drying system into the dock so that the mop doesn't smell if it's left for a while. This used to be an optional extra that was almost impossible to find for the S7 Max-V Ultra. To really test the S8's dual brushes, I visited a friend's house who has lots of pets. I divided this rug in half and put the S7 Max on one side and the S8 Pro on the other with the same suction settings. After one pass, I checked the dust bins on both. The S7 Max had picked up a surprising amount and was just over half full, while the S8 dustbin was almost at full capacity already. Then I put the robots back for a second pass, but switched their sides on the rug to see how much each would get in a second pass that the other one had missed. Again, the S8 Pro extracted a lot more pet hair that the S7 Max missed. This test isn't perfectly scientific, wow. but it's very compelling and suggests that the dual awesome. brush does make the difference that I expected. So one of the key differences between the S7 Max-V and the S8 Pro is that the new Vibrarize system that they've got now has twice as much vibrational area and also twice as much water disbursement, which means that it's now dispersing the water right to the edge of the mopping pad. And in my real life tests, it looks like it's doing a much better job, but we're gonna put it to the test by comparing them side by side. We always do this test, but this time we've made it a little bit harder. We've actually dried it overnight, so it should be nice and hard for it to get. We did a similar comparison recently between the S7 Max-V and the Ecovacs X1 Omni, 
Although this time we've left the spills to dry for twice as long, so this is a bit harder again. The S7 Max-V did significantly better in this test than the X1 Omni, but it was immediately noticeable that the S8 was acing this test, while the S7 Max was just scraping a pass. The S8 Mop now has two vibrating modules that are scrubbing at 3,000 times per minute. According to Roborock, it has over 6 newtons of pressure on the mop, and the water dispersion is very even. So we've just finished our very first pass and we've decided to pause it and just show you what it's done after one pass. On the S7 Max V Ultra side, we've got a little bit of coffee still smeared around over here. Um, drop there and it's still a bit smeared. I don't know if you can see it clearly in the video or not. And then more interestingly, we actually put some uh, milk down, which is completely dried up and it's really hard to see in the video, but there's actually quite a lot smeared around there that looks almost like a little bit gluey now. Whereas if we go over to the S8 side and have a look over here, uh, it is pretty much just perfect. I can't really see any sign that there was anything there just 30 seconds ago. So as you can see, the mopping pad is now pretty dirty and it actually smells pretty bad too. So what we're gonna do is send it through for a single wash cycle in the new dock and see how well it cleans itself. So it's just done a self-washing cycle in the dock and it seems to take ages. I'm not sure, I've never actually timed them, but it seemed to take a lot longer than what the S7 Max-V did. So I expect it to be pretty good because the S7 Max-V did pretty well as well. Uh, but taking a look at it, uh, it does look pretty good. Uh, I immediately noticed that it doesn't smell anymore. Uh, it was pretty overwhelming before, but it smells, there's no smell at all really. Uh, so it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of tiny little grass here from my previous test, not from the mopping itself, but the actual mopping pad has no, well, barely any discolouring at all. So we did a much better real life pet hair test, but we always do this, so I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm just gonna put some hair down and stamp it into the carpet and see how it goes. So it did extremely well. Uh, there are a couple of little pieces left around on the floor. Uh, primarily this big pit here, which it did struggle to get up. I do wonder if it's something to do with the double rollers, but I have seen that pretty much every robot will struggle with big pieces. It has broken it up into slightly smaller pieces and it would get it in the next run, but it has also flicked those smaller pieces around a little bit. So overall, I would say that the only bits that it's really missed are really big bits or bits that the side brush has flicked out of the way. But I would say that the side brush has done pretty well in this regard and it seems to be running at a pretty good speed. So it did get almost all of the hair except for this one little clump that's left here. I'm sure that if I do send it out for a second pass it will get it all and it will get any other little tiny bits that it did miss. So the robot has returned to base and emptied itself. So I'm just gonna take a look at the dustbin and then at the brushes to see how well it's done at emptying itself and see how much hair has made it through into the dustbin. Dust bin removed. Well, there is absolutely nothing left inside that dustbin. Not a single piece of dust. 
looking at the bottom here, you can see immediately that there is a bit of hair around the end. And I didn't actually clean these brushes beforehand, but it'll be really obvious to see what is real hair and what is synthetic. Obviously nothing around the rubber brush, but on these ends here we have a bit tangled. That's after quite a few hours of cleaning in addition to the test that we just did now there. So I think it's pretty good. Quite a bit more on that back one there. Overall, I'd say that pet owners and people with long hair will probably only have to empty this out here about once every week or every two weeks, depending on how much you're actually shedding. It's worth noting that it has DTOF obstacle avoidance and a black and white camera instead of the color option that you could also view through the app on the S7 Max. I didn't really notice a huge difference in performance though, so it was still about as good as anything on the market, but may miss cable sometimes, particularly when they're in the shadow. The app is very similar to the S7 Max V, so it's full featured and intuitive. You can schedule cleaning routines or start a clean, track its progress, or change settings from anywhere in the world. The mopping is a step up from the previous model, and it's getting closer to being as good at mopping as it is at vacuuming. It still won't get really stubborn old stains, but it will get most other messes, and the mop is definitely very worth having. Overall, I think the S8 Pro Ultra does promise to be the incredible robot that we hoped. It will clean much better on carpet for pet owners, the navigation is incredible, and it combines the winning combination of the do-everything, self-maintaining base and the mop lifting functionality. I would recommend it to anyone that can afford it, as it's now very well rounded on hard floors, carpets, and big or small homes. Those with multi-level homes will still be able to clean each level, but will have to carry it up and down the stairs. We have one Roborock S8 Pro Ultra to give away to someone that's watching this video. To enter the draw, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like this video, and then leave us a comment below letting us know your thoughts about this robot. And we'll be picking the winner later on once the robot is actually launched. If you enjoyed this review, you may also enjoy our dreamy L10S Ultra video, which I'm hoping to release in a week or so. I'll also be making a lot more comparison videos of the S8 Pro with the other top models very soon. I also do my best to answer any questions that you ask in the comments below or via our Instagram, which is in the description. No, no, you don't know what you're doing, do you?